Hi, welcome to kindergarten and first grade math. My name is Miss Prescott and I'm one of the first grade teachers at South Shore Pre-K 8 in Rainier Beach. I know it's really difficult not to be in school right now and know that all of us across Seattle Public Schools really miss being with our students each day. I am excited though to be with you today and do a bit of math learning together. Let's go ahead and see what we have planned. Today on Kindergarten and First Grade Math with Ms. Prescott, we will do four different things. First, we're gonna play a game called Make It 10. You will just need your fingers for this game. Next, we'll do a read aloud. We're gonna read the book, Elevator Magic. Third, we're gonna do some math movements. Movement, so you're gonna get up and move your body. And fourth, we're gonna do a quick image. That means we're gonna look at pictures and ask ourselves questions and think about what we see. Before we get started with all of this though, we're gonna talk about our math practice. That means we're gonna talk about something we're gonna keep in mind to help us become stronger mathematicians. Our math practice for today is modeling with mathematics. You might wonder, what does that mean? That means I can show my work in many ways. While we're working on all four of these activities today, we're gonna to keep that in mind. How can we show our work in many ways? Let's go ahead and get started with our first activity. Today, we're gonna to learn a game called Make It 10. And this game's great because it's super quick and you can play it anywhere you go. If you're on a walk with your family, sitting on the couch, even when somebody's cooking you some food, you could play this game. All right, so the materials that you're gonna need to play it are your 10 fingers and a partner. As you can see, I don't have any human partners around. So Mr. Penguin right here is gonna help me out. But unfortunately, he doesn't have any fingers, just two wings. So I've gone ahead and drawn some fingers for him up here. All right, I'm gonna explain the game first and kind of show you, and then I'll play with Penguin up here. All right, so when we're playing the game, partner one gets to put forward a, however many fingers they wanna put under 10. And then the second partner has to figure out how many more fingers would be needed to make 10. So for example, if I put up five, one, two, three, four, five, Penguin's gonna have to figure out how many more to make 10. What do you think, Penguin? He says five more. All right, can we count together to make sure that 10 is the total? Let's try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, there we go. We made a 10, so make it 10. We did it. All right, let's try now on our board up here. So, Penguin, how many fingers did you want to put forward? Six. All right, Penguin. I'm going to color in six fingers. One, count with me, please. Two, three, four, five. Just go ahead and count. color that whole hand to show we have five and six. All right, so penguins show six fingers. Now I have to figure out how many more to get to 10. One strategy I've seen people use is to count their, the fingers that are not up. So they might put up the fingers that the first person put, like six, and then count the ones that are not up. So let's count them. One, two, three, Four. Hmm, Penguin, I think it is four. So I'm going to say four. Now, let's count together. So I'm going to put up four. One, two, three, four. Right? There's four. I'm going to add the six. So let's count together to make sure the total is ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We made a ten. All right, I'm going to color those four in. If 
I thought it was four and sure enough, six and four make 10. Oh, I'm thinking back to our math practice now, which was I can show my work in many ways. So right now, you might be able to think of a way to also show this work in another way. There's a challenge question for you. All right, let's try our game, make it 10 one more time. All right, my turn to choose and I'm gonna say, I'd like to start with seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there are seven. This is backwards for me. There we go. Seven fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now Penguin has to figure out how many more. What do you think, Penguin? He says three. Hmm, how did you figure out how many fingers were needed to make 10, Penguin? Hmm, he says he counted up. I think when he says he counted up, he must have put the number seven that we started with in his head and then counted up to 10. Let's try that, everyone. So hold seven in your head. Now we're gonna count up seven, eight, nine, and we're stopping at 10, because we want to make 10. And that is how many? One, two, and three. So let's check it. We're going to count, color in three more here, because Penguin said three. Let's check it. Let's count together to make sure the total is 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Again, you can challenge yourself on this one to think of some other ways you could show that seven and three equal 10. All right, I hope you have fun playing this game with your families. Now we're gonna do our read aloud, Elevator Magic. It's by Stuart J. Murphy and illustrated by G. Brian Karras. So in Elevator Magic, a boy helps his mom run some errands in a building. They need to take the elevator to different floors to get to the places they need to go. And the floors he gets off on are magical. As you can see here, the floor that he's getting off the elevator from isn't something we usually would see inside of a building. So we'll see what else he finds in this building. Before we get started with the book though, I want us to think about our mathematical practice, which was model with mathematics or I can show my work many ways. So what, what kind of math do we think that our main character is gonna see in this story? And how might he show his thinking or show his work when he's doing that math? All right, let's go ahead and find out and keep that in the back of our mind, how he's showing his thinking or his work throughout this book. All right, elevator magic. Hi, Ben. I'm glad you came up to meet me. I'm all set to go, but we have to make a few stops on the way down. Is it okay to push the buttons? Sure. First, we have to cash a check at Farm Bank and Trust. It's two floors down from here. Mom said two floors down. Which one do I press? Does anybody else notice on this page? I think he's found a way to use math. And he's sharing his thinking with us. He's saying, we're on 10, so he found the button for 10. And we need to go two floors down, so he's gonna make two hops down. Let's count that. One, two. And he's landed on floor number eight, which says farm, bank, and trust. He showed his work another way right there. He said 10 minus two equals eight. And he says, I think that floor eight would be the best guess. Let's find out if that is his best guess. We're almost there. We're getting off now. I think I hear it oinking and mooing and oink, oink, moo, truck, truck. Ooh, hee ha, hee ha, oink. Wow. Farm 
bank and trust. Hee-haw, hee-haw. There's the milk truck. Clink, clink. There's a farmer. Oink, cluck, cluck, moo. In this bank, there's a horse and chickens, of course. A donkey, a pig, and even a cow. Next, we have to drop off this package. It's Speedway Delivery, three floors down from here. What should I push to go down just three? Now let's look at his thinking again. Now we're on eight and three floors down. So let's do those hops. He's showing his thinking here. One, two, three, and that gets us to floor number five, where it says Speedway Delivery is. And I see that he shared his thinking or his work right here again and said eight minus three equals five. Let's see, floor five is where Speedway Delivery should be. All right, let's see if it is. We're finally here. That seemed kind of slow. Now I hear rumbling and screeching and vroom, screech, screech, vroom. Oh boy. Oh, Speedway delivery. Vroom, vroom. There will soon be a race in this big noisy place. The cars and the trucks are all ready to go. Let's make a special stop at the Hard Rock Candy Store. It's one floor down from here. All right, let's see what he thinks here. I'll press the next button to go down one floor. We're on five. One floor down. Let's make that jump or that hop. One. So that leaves us at floor number four, Hard Rock Candy Store. He shows his work over here again. Five minus one equals four. There'll be lots of treats when we get to floor four. The door is about to open. I can't wait to see. I hear lots of twanging and banging and boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, hip hop, hip hop, twang, bang, rat a tat tat, twang. Here's the Hard Rock Candy Store. Gee. The store is filled with sound. Bright lights spin around. A rock band is starting to play just for me. Rat a tat tat, twang, bing, boom, ba. Here's your treat. Now we're all set to go. Rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, boom. We're going to meet Dad, who's on the first floor. Ooh, I noticed the way he's figuring out which, what to do here is different from the times before. Before, he knew how many floors he needed to travel. Like here, he would know he was on eight and he knew he needed to travel three floors down and the answer he was trying to figure out was what floor he would end up on. But here, that has changed. Instead, he knows he's on floor four. But instead of knowing how many jumps, he doesn't know how many jumps yet. He just knows he needs to get to floor one. So he already knows the floor that he needs to go to. So to figure that out, he says, we're on floor four. Dad's on one. So four minus three, sorry, but four minus one equals three floors down. So he's thinking if he's at four, he's gonna need to make three jumps to go three floors down and that will get him to one. Let's check, three hops, one, two, and three. Does that get him to one? It sure does and that is the lobby. That's usually the main floor of a building. So from floor four to floor one is three floors more. We're almost there now, then we'll be on our way. Here he is thinking about everything he's seen in the magic elevator. Boom, twang, hee-haw, hee-haw, vroom, oink, vroom, cluck, cluck, moo. Now I hear honking and beeping and beep, beep, honk, honk, taxi, toot, toot. Hey, what a great time I've had. I can't wait to tell dad. There's dad, honk, honk, taxi, beep, beep, 
Toot toot. My elevator ride was like magic today. There's all the people he saw in the building. There we go. So, as we read the book today, we explored the different ways that the boy showed his thinking or showed his work when he found math around him in the elevator as he was traveling down the building. All right. Thanks for listening. All right, for our math movement today, we are going to get fit and have some fun while we count to 100 by ones. That means that we are going to be doing some movements as we count. So each time we hit a decade number, that means when we hit 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, we'll end on 100. When we hit one of those numbers, I'm going to change the movement we do. I'll tell you what we're going to change to, okay? So we're going to start with rainbow arms like this. Make sure that you are counting the whole time and try to keep up with me. All right, let's get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now twist. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now we're going to do arm pumps, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now arm circles, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Now march in place. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Now we're going to shrug our shoulders. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Now we're going to pull our elbows back. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Now push the air up. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. Now we're going to jog in place. 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. Now we're going to go back to our rainbow arms and finish it up. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99 and 100. Nice job, everyone. I hope you had some fun with that. This is an activity you can always do around your house, when you go for a walk, wherever you find a spot. You can choose somebody to be the leader and make up the different movements each time or come up with them together. All right, let's move on to our next lesson. The last activity we're going to do together today is a quick image. That means I'm gonna show you an image or a picture of something. Right now I'm gonna show you a picture of ducks. So you are going to be looking at that image and trying to figure out how many dots there are. The quick part about a quick image is the first time I show you it, you only get to see it for four seconds. So you wanna pay real close attention to see if you can figure out how many dots there are. So our activity will look like this. I'm gonna show you the picture really quickly, give you four seconds to figure out how many dots you see. I'm gonna show you the picture again for a second time. That time I'll keep it up for much longer because we're gonna really figure out how many are there. And if you don't get the same number the first time as the second time, that's okay. You can revise your thinking. That means you can change what you thought, because good mathematicians are always doing that, learning from their mistakes and growing. So we'll see the picture twice 
We'll figure out how many there are, and then we're going to talk about how we saw that amount. All right, let's get ready. Make sure you're paying close attention. I'm only going to show it for four seconds this first time. Let's go ahead and go. All right, do you think you know how many were up there? Let's take a look again. Did you see the same amount or did you need to revise your thinking? How many dots do we see there? If you said 10, you were correct. Now, what ways can you show that this is 10? What ways did you see that it was 10? One of the ways that I saw it was 10 was I noticed that this green pad right here had five on it. I recognized that as a dice. I saw, okay, that's five. And then I recognized this model over here as a 10 frame and saw that the top was filled up and that if a top of a 10 frame is filled up, that must also be five. So I knew I had five from the dice and five from the top of the 10 frame. So five plus five must equal 10. Thinking back to our math practice of I can show my work in many ways, I'm realizing now that I can use that because I just showed you one way that I found out that this was 10, but I can show my work in many ways. So another way, so I'm gonna challenge myself and think another way I could show this is 10 is to count by ones. I Maybe you did that too. Let's count it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go, we got ten again. I'm trying to think, is there even another way that you maybe saw ten here? Another way that's coming to my mind is a counting on strategy. I, somebody could have seen this as five and recognized that dice like I did and then counted by ones for the rest of it. So let's try that. We're gonna hold five in our head five and count by ones, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There is another way to make ten. Nice job, everyone. All right, we are going to look at a second image now. This image is different. It is actually a picture of an elevator. Remember our book from earlier, Elevator Magic? So this is, these are some buttons from an elevator. So you're going to try to figure out how many elevator buttons are in this picture. And remember, the first time I show it to you, you can only look at it, or I'm only going to show it to you for four seconds. So let's get ready. All right, let's go. All right, how many elevator buttons did you see? Okay, I'm going to show it to you again. Remember, it's okay if you revise your thinking. You might see it a different way the second time I show you. Let's go ahead and look. Okay, did you see it? Did you see the same amount of elevator buttons the first time and second time? Or the second time did you need to revise your thinking? Remember, it's always okay to revise your thinking. All right. So how many elevator buttons do we see? If you said 10, you are correct. There are 10 elevator buttons here. Now this, is, it, now this one looks a little different to me and there's a lot of different ways we could have seen this one. Again, another way to, to see this one is to count it up by ones. So let's try that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remember, we're thinking of all the ways we can show our work. So what's another way that we could show that this is 10? Another way that came up, came up to me was not counting by ones, but by counting by threes. Does anybody out there know how to count by threes yet? If you don't, that's okay. You're gonna help me count along right now. So I saw it by counting by threes. So I counted. Let's make this a little thicker. There we go. All right. 
I saw we, by counting by threes. And we did three. And three more is six. And three more is nine. Plus one more is ten. So that's how I saw it. I saw three, six, nine, and ten. Hmm, I wonder if there's any other ways that we could see this. How about instead of counting by threes, could we count by twos? Let's try that. Two, four, six, eight, and ten. There's another way to see it. All right, are there any other ways that maybe you saw it that I didn't cover? There probably are. There's lots of different ways to see the math around us. Well, thank you all for joining me today and for all of this great learning we've done together. I'm excited that we get two more days to do this and um, just thank you. All right, so I will see you later. Have a great day. Bye.